Welcome to a Wild Wednesday with Wob Gronkowski. Why Wob? Because we adore alliteration around here. We also adore a sack king. That's right, all pro cam. Jordan hangs out ahead of Wild Card Weekend. And I wore my very best waterproof mascara today for our visit with the hilarious Paul Berzi. He's in studio. He's on tour now. He has a new Netflix special, but same old giant super fan. Okay, let's hit it. I have coffee this morning from Starbucks. That means it's going to be insane. Let's go. Who just cut me off, got me a coffee this morning. So I don't know if I have an apology for something coming later. Do we, are we in a fight? Did something happen? Does, does he have bad news to deliver me? I feel like I get coffees when there's that sort of thing going on. Uh, I thought it was Thursday fully. When I sat down today, I said, happy Thursday, everybody. Nope, nope, it's not. But uh, I might not know what day it is. I do, in fact, know what season it is, people. It is Samuel L. Jackson, hold on to your butt season in the NFL. Wild Card Weekend is upon us, or as I like to call it, Six Flags NFL. The ups, the downs, the loops, the swirls, the bumpy rides for some. Uh, and if anyone ever rode the American Eagle at Six Flags Great America in Illinois, you know what I'm talking about. Holy migraine. Any wooden roller coaster could be what it's like for some of these NFL teams in the playoffs. And send the acetaminophen and the barf bag down to Baltimore. Get it? Ba barf bag Baltimore? Alliteration. Distressing news, though to be serious here for Ravens fan this morning. Man, NFL Network's Ian Rappaport and Garofolo are reporting that Lamar Jackson faces an uphill battle to play this weekend against the Bengals. This sucks, this totally sucks. Garofolo, he adds that Lamar has tried to do some work on his injured knee, but hasn't felt right to this point. He's yet to practice at all, getting uh, at all since getting hurt as the Ravens begin practice work for the Bengals today. I'm shocked by this. We thought he'd be back and it, it really is surprising and I hate this for him. He's missed the final five games of the regular season. It would be awful, like a nightmare scenario if he misses what could be his last chance to get out there, make a statement on the field before dealing with looming and potentially dooming contract negotiations. And it would also be clearly a downgrade and a shot to the Ravens' chances this weekend uh, in their third matchup against this Bengals squad. Backup Tyler Huntley missed last week, of course, with the shoulder. So if Lamar can't go, is it Anthony Brown again? This is tough news, and we'll, of course, be tracking it. Uh, but barring a perfect defensive performance from this Ravens squad, they need to put up, what, 25 points? And I'm not sure if that's Huntley or if that's Brown. So we're going to be following that story and getting you guys set with the playoff picture. Very curious about Gronk thoughts, very curious about what Cam Jordan thinks, and we'll, of course, hit the Giants and the Vikings uh, battle as well. So we're going to turn our attention to Wild Card Weekend here on this Wednesday. Uh, and we're going to turn the page from the 2022 regular season and start looking ahead to the playoffs. And I always do underreactions on Wednesdays, which should have been my first sign that that was the day of the week. But uh, I'm going to do it Wild Card style, and we're going to focus on the NFC today, AFC tomorrow. So lots of focus on Brock Purdy's incredible run, their number one defense. Lots is made of that. And I think it's made us collectively, you and me, underreact to how big of an impact Christian McCaffrey's actually had on the San Francisco 49ers. I think we take it a little for granted and we're not giving it its credit. So if you just look at what CMC has done since taking over the starting role for the Niners back in week eight, I mean, are you kidding me? The Niners have gone a perfect 10-0, and he's averaged over 100 total yards per game, scored 10 total touchdowns, which is tied with Jamal Williams for the league lead, by the way, over that span, who got plenty of love for it against the Lions as they bounced the Packers on Sunday night. And he's caught 50 balls. This is the ultimate security blanket for Brock Purdy. So we gave George Kittle his love, we've given Brock his love, we've given Shanahan his love, we've given Bosa his love, we've given the number one defense his love. But you know, don't forget, the Niners were three and four before integrating him fully into this offense that they have up there. I mean, this is probably the most impactful midseason addition that we've seen in the history of the league. Challenge me on that. Most impactful midseason addition in the history of the league. Who am I missing? Bueller? Bueller, let me know, at Up and Adam Show. And I'm excited to see this first playoff appearance. Uh, he, of course, had one. I could hardly remember it. It was his rookie year back with the Panthers. This is five years in the making, and he's healthy, and he's going to be the key in this game 
against the Seahawks. The Niners, of course, beat the Seahawks when they did it a couple weeks ago. He racked up 32 touches. He looks so healthy. He looks so good. 138 yards and a touchdown. You know this offense is going to run through him against the Seahawks. They have the 30th ranked run defense. And I'd have to imagine that um, he's going to keep that success rolling this week. Uh, another thing we're underreacting to, let's move on here to the Giants. Kenny Galladay, why is this not getting enough love? I saw this and I was like, Am I, the gas leak happened? Am I, are there fumes in my head? Is this really happening here? Colliday scored a touchdown Sunday against the Eagles on Darius Slay. What? And I think we're underreacting not only to that, but to also the Giants receivers and how they're playing of late. Oh, what? This acrobatic grab in the fourth quarter marks his first touchdown in almost three years. I saw that and was like, okay, what are we what are we working with here going into the playoffs? And maybe this gets him going just in time. A little spark, a little momentum, a little something. Either way, so much was made about how terrible this Giants receiving core is. Like, do they even have a receiving core? We need Odell Beckham Jr. Get Brandon Marshall's coming on saying, get him to the Giants. They need him. Daniel Jones needs him. But these guys have been making plays lately, and there's going to be room for them to make a big impact against the Vikings. Want to know why? Because as good as we think the Vikings are, and I know they got magic in these one-possession situations, you know, they're a roller coaster, and it always goes their way, and they land safely, and everybody's okay. They have the 31st-ranked pass defense in the playoff. Isn't that insane? 31st. Uh, and just as they did in week 16, okay, former Niners seventh rounder Richie James had eight catches for 90 yards in that first matchup. Hodgins, hello, Isaiah Hodgins. Welcome to the conversation here. He's the Giants guy that they signed midseason. He was cut, of course, by the Buffalo Bills. He had eight grabs for 89 yards and a touchdown. Darian Slayton chipped in. He had 79 yards of his own. It took two turnovers. It took took a blocked punt. It took a 61-yard field goal for the Vikings to overcome that effort and get the win in that one. So I think underreacted to is that this group of playmakers sort of misfits. What are we making of them? They're going to have a big say in this rematch unless the Vikings magically change something with their pasty overnight. And they're peaking at the right time. So that's definitely something I'm looking at. Um, okay, let's move on to NFC. What's the last one? Oh, Bucks cowboys uh, I know the Buccaneers offense has been struggle city, okay? Uh, sure. And I know that their run game ranks dead last in the NFL, and those are things that we know. I think we're underreacting to the fact that Playoff Lenny, remember that nickname? Playoff Lenny, are you here? Are you with us? Do you exist in eight career playoff games? Let's, let's remember here. This is, isn't just with the Bucks and Tom Brady. With the Jags, too. Fournette's gone six and two. He's averaged 105.1 total yards a game, and he scored 10 touchdowns. So he's one of the truly great postseason performers this league has ever seen. Think about that. Until McCaffrey comes and, you know, crushes it and wins the Super Bowl. But that's neither here nor there. Leonard Fournette was the driving force on this Bucks offense. This is what brought Brady that seventh ring. If you really think about it, when they started clicking, what started clicking, why he got a nickname. You don't get a playoff nickname for nothing. And while I know Tampa's offensive line is mm, not the same as it was, especially not back then, in these numbers that I'm talking about, at least with his time at the Buccaneers, we can't underestimate what Lenny could do, especially in this matchup. This defense with the Cowboys, they got some playmakers, they can do some things, but they are bottom 10 against the run. He went off for 137 yards in Tampa's week one win over Dallas. I know it's been a long time, but what if he can have another big day? And what if he's the reason that they don't and they get bounced? So Lenny's gonna play huge in this matchup on wild card weekend. Okay, I want you to send me guys, if there's a mid-season addition on any team that made a huge impact a la a McCaffrey that I'm missing. I also want you to send me and tweet me um, the roller coaster that you hated the most as a child. Like anything I did at Six Flags Great America, the demon, Batman, no, not interested at all. Viper was one when I was there. If the American Eagle is still in service at Six Flags Great America, we have failed as a society, in my opinion. Tweet me, let me know, and I appreciated so much everybody uh, sending me the venture. Uh, the venture the ideas and so it was the OG target and I really that I really felt seen in that moment so love you guys we got Gronk we got Cam Jordan on the show Paul Verzi a super hilarious comedian comedian do not go anywhere the old world tight end the six foot seven three you can call me to go Rob Gronkowski touchdown oh my goodness go 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 holy Gronk of all the greatest of all time
he's retired? Unretired? Keeping the door open? We don't even care. He's a FanDuel family member for now, at least a four-time Super Bowl champion. Can never take that away from him. And the best tight end of all time, I said it, Rob Gronkowski. How are you? Whoa! Let's go, baby. Company the door man. is closed. I am now with FanDuel. <laughs> Company man, you are in the team gear. That's you got. Wow, those executives love you a lot more than me. I'll tell you that even just for that. Listen, we have so much to talk about. Last time you were on the show, um, first of all, you were very excited about your segment on Fox on Sunday. And then after it aired, and you did a great job, um, I was watching your girlfriend's Instagram story, and so were our producers. And I, we just need to get over it. We, we need to discuss this. This is what Camille Costic posted. Take a look. And then I watched it and I said, oh, you were Bob Ross. And he said, who is that? Hello, I'm Rob Gronkowski, and welcome to... He's a legend. The late Bob yes. Ross. You didn't know who he was? I don't understand. Yes. No, I didn't really know who he was. When I showed up, they're like, you're going to do the Bob Ross painting. And actually, Fox, they sent me a couple of his YouTube videos in my email. And then, of course, I didn't watch the videos at all because I was a very busy man, just working very hard for FanDuel, you know, doing all my commercials for him and all yeah. that good stuff. So uh, I finally do, you know, I finally get to, this, uh, to the studio. And then I watch uh, while I'm on the chair and they're putting the hair on and the beard and everything. Then I watched a video of Bob Ross and I had to try to get his voice down. It was like very sophisticated <laughs> voice, very mellow, but, you know, kind of touchy. So I felt like I got it down and, it, and the segment came out very, very, very well. You killed it. And now you're kicking. So let's just dig into it. It's the kick of destiny. You're kicking a field goal, my friend, live, live live during the Super Bowl somehow with $10 million in FanDuel free bets on the line. Now, I flagged this like a month ago because TMZ caught you practicing kicks. And I'm like, what's going on here? So when you're training right now, and I'm sure you're training hard because that's just how you're wired, what would you say your, your make percentage is? All right, so my make percentage. First off, I was kind, I'm kind of a toe kicker. I actually made a field goal when I was in high school. Um, I made a 33-yard field goal in high school, and it was with the toe. And I was actually the kick. I was the guy that kicked off uh, at my high school as well. But I, I always use my toe. And when I did pump pass and kick when I was growing up as a kid, I used my toe. But I don't want to use my toe. I want to learn the correct way. It's uh, I feel like when you do it the soccer style, when you use side of your foot, your accuracy percentage just goes way up, you know. And uh, I'm going to actually start practicing. Vinatieri taught me some tips uh, when I was with him shooting the training montage video, which will be coming out soon. Next week, it's uh, very, very cool. Uh, he taught me some tips, but uh, my percentage sideways is probably about like 20% right now. But I got a big practice day tomorrow, and I got another big practice day over the weekend. And I I'm going to solidify that percentage up to like 75% by end of this week. Gronk, you're such a liability, because I don't think you're supposed to say that you have a training montage with Adam Vinatieri coming out, and yeah. you just... <laughs> Just, well, you, know, like, you, can, you know, then don't you got to stop putting me live on air. You know, Grok, you got to just stop doing that stuff. I'm dying. Grok, like two weeks ago, I'm like, what have you been up to? And you're like, I'm shooting this thing. And I'm like, no, no, don't say it. Don't say it, Grok. Hey, you don't really know what it is, though. You don't really no, know don't. what it is. So it's all no. right. It's just like a little clue. It's just a clue. It's exact, that's yeah. exactly right. Well, we're wishing you luck in your training, and uh, I'm glad to hear that you're taking it so seriously. I'm not surprised about that at all. Uh, let's talk about Wild Card Weekend. You didn't play on many, man. Look, you had it so easy. Your ninth season with the Patriots, you went to the playoffs eight times, and you never played in a Wild Card game. And then, of course, you went, won a Super Bowl when you did it with Tampa Bay. Did you feel like you appreciated having those buys when you were in New England, when you saw that you had to play later in your career? Oh, yes, definitely. I, I appreciate those bye weeks every single time. And, and it's just a crazy stat. I'm pretty sure when I was with New England, the, the nine years I was there, I think it was nine out of nine we, we, years we went to the playoffs. And we had a bye week all nine times from what I remember. Or was it my ninth time that we, we, played, on, we played on wild card weekend? I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I at least know eight out of the nine times yeah, you I had a bye week going into the playoffs. That's just mind blowing. That's that's yeah. that's out of that's an out of control stat. I mean, it was 
it just helps out tremendously as well. You get the rest, you get to recover. I mean, you know the playbook inside and out. You also get to study your opponent that you're going to be playing that week. You're going to watch all the playoff games. It's definitely a big advantage sitting at home, you know, healing up your body and also watching all the games play out. And you get to, you know, study your opponent, see what they're up to, see how they're playing in the playoffs. Are they bringing the juice? Are they bringing, you know, are they switching up their schemes? You get to just study them. Uh, throughout that whole week and uh, it's just a big big advantage no doubt yeah and this weekend your former bucks are taking on the cow and i actually don't think you i don't think you ever played a wild card game in new england i don't think which is insane i don't think you ever did i don't think you ever did no i don't think i i've ever did it, it is insane and my first wild card uh playoff game was actually with the buccaneers yeah. yes when we went up to uh i think it was washington when yeah. we played them uh, two years ago and uh they were actually a seven, nine, seven and nine team, and they got in. And you had, what a yeah. flip in that! What a flip in that conference. The, the Commanders got in at seven and nine, and now they almost had, um, almost had three. No, they got three playoff teams now that that division in the playoffs from two yeah. years ago when when Washington was in at seven and nine. That's that's a pretty big flip. I think that was the the, the debut of Taylor Heineke in that wild card weekend game, which is wild and everything you're saying is. So this game this weekend, Bucks Cowboys, that's the team you you know you played on wild card weekend with that went on and won a Super Bowl with. And to me, I, before you came on, I was talking about playoff Lenny. Like this could live and die on playoff Lenny. You played against him Back, I remember this back in 2017 when he was a Jag. You played with him, obviously, on that Super Bowl run. Can, like, can we count and the offensive line? I know not the same, but what is it about Leonard Fournette that makes him turn into this monster come playoff time? And can he do it right now despite the adversity? Yes, playoff Lenny just always steps it up when it comes to crunch time. Uh, he definitely led us uh, through the playoffs the last two years with the Buccaneers, and uh, I don't think it's going to change. This year, I think he's going to step it up once again when it really counts. Uh, playoff Lenny just comes through in the clutch. Uh, yes, the offensive line is a little decimated, but I think they're going to figure it out, uh, no doubt. And uh, it's not just in the run game that playoff Lenny is going to come through. He's going to come through in the pass game. When Tom needs a check down, uh, he's going to check it down to Lenny, and he's going to make you know the first guy miss and pick up 12 yards, get that first down, keep the chains moving. So he's going to definitely, I, I would say, he's going to be the most crucial player on the offensive side of the ball for the Buccaneers uh, this week going versus the Cowboys. You have so much playoff experience. Let's get some thoughts about this slate here. Wild Card Week, it's super fun. We don't know if Lamar Jackson's going to be playing. That's the news this morning, but I wanted to get some thoughts here. Listen, we all love an underdog story, Gronk. Who do you think could be the upset special of the weekend? Seahawks, Ravens maybe? Who you got? No, definitely not the Seahawks. The 49ers, their defense is, is just too stout. Like, Bosa coming off the edge, putting way too much pressure on the quarterbacks. Baltimore, no chance. Cincinnati just just absolutely tormented them last week. They're going to do it again this week. No problem. Joe Burrow has that in the book. But I'm going to go with the New York Giants. They're going to upset the ass, the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to come out. They're going to play hard. Minnesota is a team that you don't know what you're going to get. You know, you can get a team that was posed for the number one seed, or you can get a team that looked like that wasn't a playoff team at all. But the Giants, they're going to come. They come They come prepared every week to bring their best, and they're going to bring their best, and Minnesota's not. So the Giants are going to have the upset um, this week. Going up against the 30th-ranked pass defense for the Vikings. So that could happen. Those receivers are looking better. All right, keep, let's keep that slate up and ask you some more of these like rapid-fire sort of questions looking at the slate. Tight ends in this one. It's an interesting round. It's been a weird year for tight ends. We miss you out there, but look at you got Kittle in this one, Mark Andrews, Dawson Knox, TJ Hawkinson, Evan Ingram, Hayden Hurts. You got Dalton Schultz. Who will have the biggest performance uh, at the tight end position this week? All right. It's definitely going to be George Kittle. And if you look at it, the past four weeks, so he's been, uh, I, I think he's put up seven touchdowns in the past four weeks. That's, that's pretty insane for some tight end numbers right there. And uh, the thing is, though, I feel like he's putting up those numbers because Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, who is actually very relevant now, needs a safety blanket. Yeah. And you couldn't have a better safety blanket in the league than George Kittle. And that's why George Kittle is producing so much right now is because he Brock needs him, and he's going to find him. And George is going to have another monster game coming up for Seattle. Who will have the wildest performance of the weekend, meaning like an X factor, something that you know is going to happen in this game that we might not know because we don't play the game and we're not grunk? All right. Or I mean, team. 
yes, it's, it's just going to be, it's going to be Joe Burrow again. I mean, he's going to decimate the Baltimore Ravens defense. Uh, the, the Baltimore Ravens, they can sign whoever they want for $100 million. It's not going to stop Joe Burrow. You know, I think they just signed that linebacker. It, it doesn't matter. You can keep him there long term. Joe Burrow is going to decimate your secondary. He did it last week. He's going to do it again uh, this week coming up. And it's going to be back to back wins. And, and Baltimore is going to go home disappointed. And Joe Burrow is going to lead them, you know, to another deep playoff run. And we're hearing this morning that Lamar Jackson has a quote unquote uphill battle. It's sad to see he's got that contract negotiation looming. And we want him out there, of course, to sort of show what he can do ahead of that. But it's looking like he might not play this weekend. Uh, OK, now now you, you were talking about George Kittle and all those touchdowns. And it sounds like he's having fun out there with Brock Purdy. So I'm going to take just the Buccaneers off of that board. I want you to put yourself on the field. Which game, which side would you like to suit up in and catch passes for this weekend, if you could, in the dream world? Oh, all right. In the dream world, I mean, I'll, I'll go with my hometown team, the Buffalo Bills, once again. Uh, if you just watch Josh Allen go out there and play, he just plays the game freely. He, it, looks all, it also looks like he's having the most fun out there out of any QB in the whole NFL. And on top of it, he knows how to extend a play. I love watching a quarterback that, that looks like they're about to get sacked by three defense alignment and then somehow escapes the pocket and uh, runs around, jukes a linebacker behind the field, and then just whips the ball down the field 50 yards for a touchdown. So just his play is unbelievable. He's electrifying. And uh, also, I'm from Buffalo, so I know the stadium yeah. um, at Highmark Stadium in Buffalo is going to be just as electrifying as well. I love it. And I love that you gave Joe Burrow some love. I don't I don't see it like you do, so I'd love you to explain to me. I hear this a lot, that Burrow, who you had a lot of praise for just now, is very Brady-ish, whether it's in coolness, being in control, the way he plays, the style, all of that. And we've heard those comparisons. Do you see comparisons, and what are they? Yes, I 100% see the comparison. I actually thought about that comparison when I watched him. My first time I've, I've ever heard about Joe Burrow was actually when uh, I watched the national championship game when he won it with LSU. And I was just sitting there watching the game, and, and I was like, this guy literally reminds me of Tom Brady, hmm. like, to the T. Just his presence in the pocket, just how calm and still he is, and just the way he's able to just read the field, read what the defense is doing. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have the best arm in the NFL. It doesn't matter if you're the strongest quarterback in the NFL. If you can read a defense, if you can place the ball where the defenders aren't, that's what makes you a top, you know, top quality, great QB in the NFL. And Joe Burrow has that just like Tom Brady. It's high praise, and like they faced each other this year, and, and a lot was made of that. So they never faced each other before. So we'll see how it goes here on Wild Card Weekend. A question about your kicking uh, from one of our producers who texted me: Has he thought about going barefoot, old school Jeff Wilkins style? No, no, no. I am not going barefoot. Uh, first off, I'm a toe guy, like, and I'm trying yeah. to switch it to be a side of my foot. And if I was a toe guy and I went barefoot, I would have no toes left. They would, <laughs> My toenails would be bleeding everywhere. My big toe would be black and blue and swollen. So definitely not going barefoot. But on the other hand, once I learn, you know, this soccer style, which is very tough when you've never done it before, but I'm, I'm going to try and get it down, the soccer style field goal kicking. If I get it down, then possibly I could go barefoot, but I'm not going to risk that chance. I need that shoe on my foot to give me the most power. And what is the best tip that Vinatieri gave you so far? Oh, the best tip. Uh, he told me to kick it, uh, to kick it with my toe because he said <laughs> that I don't think there's any way that you can fix the way that I'm kicking sideways. He was, he was, yeah, that, that's how bad it was at one point is that he thought I was unfixable to really to do soccer style kicking. So the best tip he goes, Rob, it's just one kick. Just do it with your toe, man. He, Just talking, do it with your toe. Is he talking it, it to looks you about? Bad. Is he talking to you about pressure at all? Like it's kind of a different kind of pressure. Or is it the same as you know any t play that you've ever made in the playoff game? You know there is a lot of pressure, but uh, I'm not really worried about it yet because it is a month and a half, or no, about a month away, a little bit more than a month. I mean, I'm sure when it, it starts getting you know the final countdown a couple days before. I mean, I'm not trying to sit here a month ahead of time and yeah. biting my nails and not not be able to sleep <laughs> i mean we're a month away 
I know there's going to be pressure for sure when I when I you know step up to the plate. I'll probably be a little shaky, but that's why I also want to do this practice because I want to make sure I'm ready to go and I want to hit this kick for America because I'm for America <laughs> and I'm going to do it for America. Ten million dollars in yes. free bets. Let's go. It is. I want. I'm curious, and we'll let you go here. We have a guest coming on after this. Uh, Cam Jordan, all pro, of course, for the New Orleans Saints. Do you think that Rob Gronkowski can hit a field goal during the Super Bowl, Cam? Jordan, as do we have him, Cam? Do, do it for ten million dollars in free bets, go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not only do I think you know Gronk is a uh, is a pack tenner, so I got nothing but pride <laughs> in my guy. Um, you know, I, I think that if anybody can do it, Gronk can. I mean, I've seen him in in, in WWE. I've seen him, you know, go grab big touchdowns in, in the NFL. What's a kick? I believe in my dog. Thank you, Cam. I appreciate it, man. You're an animal, man. Still going, <laughs> still a beast off the edge. You and you, that was that was a brutal lineup, man. Putting my hand down the block as a tight end, as a tight end, that's the worst nightmare. You have Cam Jordan, and you got D D Dave and Port on the other side, who's about 290 pounds. You guys are two absolute monsters. I'm putting my hand down versus you guys. I'm like, hopefully it's just a pass play every time. But you guys are two beasts, man. You you've had a great career as uh, as well, Cam. Hey, I appreciate it, Broski. I appreciate it. That's that's major no love. No problem, man. I appreciate the love for getting uh, and the confidence in my field goal kicking as well. <laughs> Come on, man. Go ahead and knock that thing out. Look, I, I tuned in and you were talking about feet, and I was like, yo, I, I tuned in at the wrong second. I'm glad we're talking about field goals. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about field goals. It's not. It's not the Rex Ryan style feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I got to interject here. Okay, amazing. We'll see you two in Canton at the Hall of Fame at some point. Go work on your kicking, Gronk. We appreciate you. We will be back with Saints All-Pro defensive end Cam Jordan. We will not talk about feet. We'll talk about gold jackets and sacks and more. Don't go anywhere. I get up, I get up, I get up, I get up. Now they go. Cam Jordan, he has been a menace. To throw the pressure, he's taken down. Nobody plays hard to get like our next guest. We've been chasing him and chasing him. Come on the show, come on the show. And finally, we have landed the sack leader, the co-host of the Trust Levels podcast with our boy Mark Ingram. And he holds the franchise record, the franchise record, think about that, for sacks in New Orleans. A seven-time Pro Bowler, first team All-Pro, defensive end for the Saints, Cam Jordan. Oh, just lit me out here. Levels on levels on levels. <laughs> How are you? I appreciate you for having me on. Like, finally. Oh, you said up. you were, like, looking for me. I was just like, I'm just waiting for the call. I must not be. You got to be able to ball to get the call. And I was just waiting <laughs> on my time. Oh, shout out to Deion Sanders. We love it. Uh, <laughs> why are you at the facility? What happens now? Why are you there? Um, Actually, I was coming in to work out. So I'm, I'm really I'm really sneaking in and was like, hey, you know what? <laughs> it's time for me to tune in. Because <laughs> I can tell that's where that's where Mark joins us from, so I, I know where you are. So sorry, Dennis Al, but look at that. You're getting your work in, which is insane. You don't really have to be doing that because you had such a good season. I know it wasn't the season your team wanted, but you were the Saints' all-time sack leader. What does that feel like? Um, it feels regular. You know, the, uh, the former uh, sack leader, Ricky Jackson, he had a phenomenal career, Hall of Fame career. He had 115 sacks within the black and gold. Um, and so really, I'm just sitting at 115 and a half. I don't know if that half gives me enough leeway to be satisfied. Mm. So, you know, um, I won a Super Bowl and we're already out of the playoffs the second year in a row. So I I, as much as you could say it was a good season, a good season is not going to cut it. You got to be great. I need a phenomenal season. I need a Super Bowl. I don't know what it's going to take. I haven't gotten there yet. And it, it's uh, I'm not saying it's 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 irking, irksome, but it's irksome. No, I've heard you talk about it. You're like literally every time about this time of year, you guys usually are in the playoffs. We discuss this, what I want to ring. You want it so bad, that's why you're at the facility working out right now. Um, but you're a little too humble for me this morning, and you're a little too, so I'm glad that we have friends like Mark Ingram to pick you up. I was laughing out loud last night reading his quote tweet to your sacks. Real life goat, my blood brother, Mr. Levels, Mr. Sack King, Dr. Fu Manchu Lorian in the flesh, what? Yeah, yeah, I'm a self-proclaimed Fu Manchalorian this season, you know? I don't know anybody <laughs> who had my, my real Fu Manchu. It, it got some real length on this. 
It does. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It's disgusting. And I'm so glad uh, that I, I stuck with it throughout the whole season. And I will be cutting this somewhere soon. I'm probably going to give my daughter the Clippers. I'm like, do what you will, you know? Really? How old is she now? Yeah. Uh, my oldest daughter is six, but my four year old, uh, like grabbed my, my mustache the other day and was like, daddy, can I cut this? And I was like, yeah, yes, you can. Cam, I can't believe she's your oldest is six. Yeah. I mean, the oldest boy I got is seven. Oh my I've God. I've got kids on kids on kids. So <laughs> I got to get sex on sex on sex. <laughs> that's true. And you do, you have a lot and we're going to get to that. But, uh, one thing that's a, a nice thing about you not having to play a game this weekend is that you can comment freely on things like this. I've not talked about this yet on the show. This, seeing this as a defensive player, what happened with the Chiefs? Do we have the footage? I hope we do. This merry-go-round, ring-around-the-rosy thing, what are you thinking when you see this happen? At, at that point, I'm teeing off on somebody because I just find <laughs> it like, I'm, I'm thinking it's disrespectful. I'm like, bro, you got enough time to, to be up on us by a couple touchdowns and to, to do this? Nah, I'm not hitting you hard enough. Like, I'm smacking somebody. I might just catch a fine for it. Um, like, I, I've got I've to gotta go out my way to make somebody feel me. I'm like, they're just having too much fun. No, the, like, some, these hands would have to be put on somebody. And I probably, I probably like, it'd probably be the lineman. It might be somebody. It might be somebody after the play. Yeah. I might go offensive of line and try and be a tough guy after the play, too. Who, who is it? Put, which, which offensive lineman are you putting your hands out on that line? It doesn't matter, them. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know their names. Offensive <laughs> linemen are just oh like, they keep it in the way. I'm trying to take a wow. shot at my guy, Travis Kelsey, just be like, because I know he's having too much fun. You just like leave, walk up and suplex him just because like I could just see you doing it. You did it to Derwin James. I'll do it to you. I could just see you doing that. Just like I know, like I know he's got too much of a smile on his face. They're like winning. You know, they're, they're clearly having too much fun. They're, just, they're doing ring around the rosy. You got Pat Mahomes doing no look passes. Like, no, everybody's too happy to evolve. Somebody's got to get these hands. I love it. All right, let's talk about J.J. Watt and these sacks of yours, too, and how it sort of relates. And, and, you know, he's getting the first ballot Hall of Famer treatment, deservedly so, but you have more sacks than he does, my friend. Mm -hmm. You have 115.5. My God, what a nightmare <laughs> you are. He has 114.5. So what does it say about you and your thoughts as you, of course, look for a gold jacket? Um, it doesn't tell me anything. It means that J.J. Watt, Justin James, is a part of the draft class 2011 and one of those superheroes that, you know, little kids dream of, about being. Um, you love to see the type of career that he had in terms of the three defensive player of the years, the two times he had 20-plus sacks. Um, and it's unfortunate that within this within his career, he, you know, was hurt for numerous games. Um you can't take anything away from what he's done with the game. I mean, he was, at, at one point, he was probably the most transcendent transcendent type uh, penetrator uh, in terms of D-lineman because just to label him as an edge rusher or defensive end isn't doing him justice. He was able to move around and, and create the most havoc when he was probably in that in that B-gap, three-technique to uh, five-technique uh, situation. Me, I'm just, you know, I'm just <laughs> glad that uh, God gives me breath to, to breathe and it has been... Uh, given me the opportunity to play all 12 years. And I've only missed two games in, in this career, one to COVID and Gosh. one because my team told me I couldn't play. And I was like, but I can play. <laughs> and, so, yeah. you know, whatever it is, I just want to play more. And that matters. And he's walking away from his career. You guys were in the same draft class, right? Back in 2011. And I'm looking mm. at, I was looking at the guys that you've sacked today. Cause I think 115.5 is like insane. It's so crazy to me. Uh, is there anybody on the, uh, that's not on the list that you still need to get to. Yeah, I never got to sack Peyton Manning. So I feel like oh, well, in my not, mind. <laughs> you're not going to like, sack him at the, like, at Radio Row at the knows? Super Bowl? What do you mean? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But before my life is over, I'm probably going to have to pop him one time. It may not be registered. It may not be what. But I feel like I deserve to hit him. You know, I've hit him like when he was at, I think, Denver. I think I was too, I think I was too young to hit him at, uh, at Indianapolis. But I own one. I don't know. I've gotten Eli. You know, I'll never yeah. like Pops played with Archie Manning. I just feel like as as a Manning family, he's the only one I didn't get a chance to hit. So he's got to get oh, it. God, all the Manning children for generations are we worried about the Jordan family coming and sacking them <laughs> wherever they are? Who's the new Cam Newton in your life? Like the villain? You know what I mean? Like you had no. you, you had him for so long. Who's that guy now? Right. That's like asking you know Batman without yeah. Joker. Like no, like that's just is what it is. You can't replace him. You know, you would say that, you know, there was a Bane for me that there's always going to be another villain. It was Matt Ryan and or maybe I'm the villain. 
I'm, I'm gonna say I'm probably the villain. Um, but quarterbacks like quarterbacks are good people, and I go out of my way to make a pro- make problems for. Them. No, so I'm probably the villain. I actually think you're not the villain. You're super uh, complimentary for quarterbacks. In fact, I would love to know in your Hall of Fame speech, which we are manifesting, how much real estate is going to Matt Ryan. Uh, probably a fifth. I think that's <laughs> probably a fifth of the speech should, should, should quantify about how many sacks I've gotten off of them. I mean, 23 and like 22 career games against them. Yeah, like he, like he deserves a chunk of that. Um, I, I try and give him all his flowers now. You know, 22, 15 MVP, one of the greatest quarterbacks to do it. Ah, one of my favorite targets. You know, I don't think anybody can replace him. Then he goes to Indianapolis. I don't get a phone call, yeah. I don't get a text. Like, I feel it's hurtful. <sighs> Yeah. What if, I know you've got storied family history and you've got a million people to choose from, but the ultimate move, of course, would be if you picked him to introduce you in Canton when you're getting your bust and make your speech. Can you imagine that? Uh, that's the ultimate troll move. Yes! <laughs> oh, that's the ultimate troll move. I would probably extend the invite knowing he's going to decline me. Yeah, he might not. Matt Ryan's pretty cool, honestly. He's a cool guy. He's a nice guy. Um, okay, let's, guy. let's talk about some of this. We've got wild card action this weekend. Um, and you know what? There's a few things I can count on in life. You sacking, Matty Ice, you know, death taxes, and the Saints beating the Buccaneers. And it didn't happen this it year. And it was crazy. And you didn't really get your hands on Tom Brady like you usually do. Tell me, like, let's size this up because we're looking at him. He's got the Cowboys. Micah Parsons, that's all super scary. The offensive line isn't great. Like, is Tom Brady, like, different this year? Like, has he got what it takes? Like, size him up for me. No, Tom Brady is exactly who Tom Brady's always been. He gets the ball out fast. I don't know if it has ever mattered what offensive lineman has been in front of Tom Brady. Um, because when he is at his best, He's wheeling and dealing, intermediate routes, check downs, everything it is to move the ball, and that's just who he has been. Um, and that's why I'm, you know, I'm happy that I have sacked Tom Brady because I go in knowing these games. You can hit him as many times as you want, but he's only going to speed the ball up. He's not one of these guys that's going to, you know, sit and make the right decision, yeah. the slow right decision. He's it's quick process. He's already seen every defense you could ever try and throw at him. So he's he's all ultimately one of the greatest offensive minds you've ever seen. Yeah. Um, so against, you know, the Cowboys, you've got Demarcus Lawrence, you've got Micah Parsons, you've got the big plugs in the middle that's still getting active. Um, if anybody has the ability to get after them and then, you know, upset them with, with young digs over there and their secondary the way that they're playing, it's got to be the Cowboys. It's got to um, be, gosh. Got to be the Cowboys. When you look at the playoff picture, what's let's let's pull up the playoff picture for Cam Jordan here. Anything that sticks out to you and that we need to know about, or is like, is there a team that you think will surprise everybody? Um, Gronk said that the Giants will beat the Vikings. That's high hopes. <laughs> okay, let's look at the playoff picture. Can we pull it up, control room? Justin Justin Jefferson. What? What? What, what Eric, do you think? What? Eric Kendricks. What's the yeah, upset? No. What's the upset Minnesota. of the week? Um, the only one I could possibly see being an upset is uh, Gino. Woo! Number one defense? Yeah, yeah, that's that's about it. Like, that's... Because other than that, Philly, I don't think is losing this week. I don't think that's happening. <laughs> um, Minnesota's probably winning this week. Tampa Bay. I mean, temp, they're pretty much even, but I'm probably going to say Tampa Bay is okay. probably winning this week. Um, Jacksonville, I hope, is going to win this week. Okay. Just because my boy Marv Jones is over there. Ah, Keenan Allen over at the Chargers. Ah, that split decision. Go Bears. Um, <laughs> it's a close game, yeah. <laughs> uh, you'd say my Buffalo. <sighs> because of the love I got for Teron Armstead, I'm going to go Miami over I like Buffalo. that. I like that. I, okay, but you have love for Teron Armstead, but you don't even name offensive linemen on other. They don't have names. But Teron Armstead. True. Yeah, you, got, Teron, you gotta earn a name, and Toronto. You know what I'm saying? Best, best tackle in the game. Uh, probably <laughs> other than him. I know Trent. Um, yeah, Williams. There we go. I know that one. Yeah. Do you um, miss? Do you miss Teron? I miss him on the Saints. Yeah, that's my dog. That's my dog. You know, not even just for the offensive lineman that he is, um, but just as a person. You know, the way he gives back to community, the uh, the energy he brings to locker locker room, actually the aggressiveness that he brings and makes his other offensive linemen match his intensity. Is something you can't you can't replace. Uh, I will say this: you were, you mentioned the Dolphins and wanting Teron. Breaking news: Tua ruled out. Mike McDaniel said he's not playing, so Skylar Thompson will start for those Dolphins. 
tough bout for them in the first round. We don't even know if Lamar can suit up against the Bengals uh, in round three against them. But I will say, I just looked it up. Arch Manning, uh, he, are you going to hang on four more years to get a shot at Arch Manning? I mean, we were going to be we were pushing that cusp. I, I, I love that for me. <laughs> I love that for me. <laughs> um, at this point, you know, the way the NIL landscape has taken over college, <laughs> will we actually have to wait four more years? Like, it, at this point, it's going to be like one of those, you know, basketball transformations. Actually, you can forego, you know, that third year. They're going to, like, press it up. And since they're already programs anyways, I'll see them in two. I like, I like this for me if he can get there in two. I like this for you, too. I really do. we got to <laughs> find your next villain, and I, hopefully I see you at Super Bowl. Thank you for coming on. Please come on again, maybe with Mark. But uh, in the meantime, get <laughs> Trust Levels, new episodes going, and we got to do the Trust Levels up in Adam's collab. Deal? Oh, yeah. Big trust, big levels. levels. That was talk. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you for finally right. having me on. Oh, we'll I feel we'll be again. back. I can't even hear you. They cut my mic already. Cam Jordan, we love you. We'll talk to you soon. And hopefully I'll see you at Super Bowl. Super Bowl week, that would be amazing. We'll be back right here with Paul Verzi. We're hearing reports, reports that Lamar Jackson has an uphill battle to suit up against the Bengals. And this just in no Tua. McDaniel saying he has been ruled out. It is all about Skylar Thompson starting against Buffalo. Waterproof mascara in full text for our next guest, one of the funniest people I know. He has a stand-up special, a new one on Netflix called Nocturnal Admissions. Check it out. He's got his Verzi Effect podcast, and he's in the middle of his Level Up tour with shows all over the country. Mr. Comedian Paul Verzi! Hey, how are you? <laughs> Where are you, kiddo? <laughs> I am like eight. I am miserable because I should be in there with you right now, and I'm probably sitting five miles away from you. Um, but what am I going to do? Paul, this shit is unacceptable. It is. I mean, this... <laughs> and I come to California in the worst weather. It's the worst. It's the worst. But listen, we're rocking it. We're making it happen. I want to look at your tour dates. It's a level up tour. Everybody go check it out. Listen, Valentine's Day in Pittsburgh. Beautiful. Yes. I'm from Chicago. Early March. It sounds gorgeous to go out there and have some fun. You're in the middle of the tour. You've got so much going on. And you were at the Hollywood Improv last night. So what's the biggest difference performing out here as opposed to New York? Um, you know, the people are dumber out here. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, I, I, you know what? I think they watch comedy different in L.A. Uh, it's, listen, funny is funny, but I think here it's more like act outs and a lot more of like, they watch it different. Where in New York, I feel like it's more fast paced. All right. Now we got the Giants. Ever since I've known you, Giants, Jets suck. I moved to L.A. and all of a sudden they're good. Are the Giants going to do some damage? Gronk was on my show earlier. I asked him, what's the upset? He goes, Giants are beating the Vikings. Yeah, I think if we had the Niners, we'd be in trouble. I love our chances with the Vikings. I love uh, I love what we're doing. I love what Daniel Jones is doing. Daniel Jones has become the guy. Everybody wrote him off, Kay. Everybody yeah. said he was not the guy. He seems to be the guy. So, um, yeah, I like the Giants to win that game. I predicted the Giants every game. I don't know if you know this, but I was on another show, another <laughs> NFL show. Okay. And, and I predicted every Giants game, and I was wrong by four. Was it my old show? And I picked, uh, no, oh, okay. it was not. Okay. It was your old network. It was your old network. Okay, okay. I went on. They went down the entire schedule. I said what the Giants would do. I was wrong four times, but I said they would go nine and eight. I think we beat these. I think we beat them. I got the Giants 24-22. Uh, All right. I'm excited, but I know you're in L.A. because you were, of course, the big game on Monday at SoFi. Your career is popping off right now. Netflix special, Nocturnal Admissions, everybody take it out. You are taking over comedy like our family. Pat McAfee is taking over sports media. He's everywhere. And you guys <laughs> have something in common. You are both big believers, I understand, in aliens. Is that true? Yes. Okay. I want you to listen to what he said on my show about what he would do if he ran into an alien. Take a listen to this. Uh, yeah, I would like to just chat with him, okay? I'd like to have a conversation because I think everybody has a story, and I couldn't fathom what an outer galactic or intergalactic one would be like from an alien. And I think our we're getting close, okay? I think we're getting real close to meeting these aliens, yeah. and I am here for it. He said he wants to shake one's hand. Is that appropriate? What are your thoughts? Oh, my God. Yeah, like, I would, can I say this? I would like to, like, smoke a joint with an alien. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, I could, yeah, I would like to, like, you know, like, or, like, have some beers or, like, a tequila with an alien and just, like, let them wind down with me to see, like, what that would be like. Because they got to, like, let their hair down, too, you know? Yeah, they got, they've got. they got to do that, of course. they got to let their hair down. I think you guys are idiots. I think they're here to kill us. But, hey, I like the PG Disney movie aspect of it, the E.T., E.T. phone home part of it is great. 
they would have killed us already. We have done too many <laughs> stupid things on this planet where they could have just been like, enough is enough. I think they like us, actually. Okay, I like hearing that. Listen, we like you here on the show. Uh, everybody's getting into the broadcast booth these days, okay? You get you get kids from Nickelodeon, you got the guys from Dude Perfect, SpongeBob characters, Tony Romo. Uh, but that's a joke. But up, up, Tony Romo. But we haven't seen <laughs> a comedian get a shot since Dennis Miller in the early 2000s. What is the dream broadcast booth team comedian style? With me or, or me sure. watching? You, <clears throat> no, Put, make, if, if, make the perfect booth. I think a great booth would be myself because I got the, the, the positive energy. Then I think a Bill Burr who could give the anger, a little bit of anger, <laughs> but still be funny. And then I think Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, because he would just be, he would be like, I think he would just take things over the top with all three of us. And I think it could be a hilarious, uh, who wouldn't want to see that, man? Like, I don't know. They're getting, your, they're getting it wrong. Can you imagine? Who would be the sideline reporter in that outfit? Uh, oh, by far, Chris Rock. <laughs> like, Chris Rock, by far. Like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> Can you imagine him down there? That would be amazing. Okay, you're a Giants fan. You're plugged into the whole league, though. though quickly before you go, which dark horse team do you think could make a run here? Well, I've been saying the whole. I've been saying the whole year. Uh, I think the Chargers are going to the Super Bowl. Wow. I think. I think the Chargers are going to the Super Bowl. I think. I think with Eckler and and Keenan Allen and, and Mike Williams and all those weapons, the defense is is good. And uh, Justin Herbert, man, Justin Herbert is the dude. He's the real he deal. Is. Look at you giving Los Angeles love, even though LA's giving you no love. Not at the improv, not with the weather. If if I could tell you how upset I am about <laughs> LA right now, you you would never have me back on the program. I hate LA. I hate LA. I said it. We gotta go. Love you, Paul Bersey. Check out the tour dates, paulbersey.com. We love you. Good Come luck. Congratulations. Come back to New York. Okay. Okay. I wanna Come. go back to New York.